I think there was a terrible misstep with atheism. And what it did was it unhooked a set of protections, some of which really were no longer necessary, many of which were still essential, but for reasons that were not literally explained in the documents in question. And I know because for a while I was pretty close to the only evolutionary biologist trying to bridge this gap and speaking to religious people and saying, look, my colleagues are telling you you're sick with a mind virus. I know that's not right. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that what you think took place literally happened. And we have to have that conversation. What if what you believe is important but not literal, right? Getting there from an evolutionary perspective, if we could have done that earlier and not temporarily flirted with the idea that you know, simple atheism was somehow a sophisticated way of navigating through life, mm -hmm. then maybe um, we could have, maybe those people who had long-standing traditions that contained wisdom uh, that might have prevented this would have had more power when it mattered. <laughs>now everyone watching this knows that I'm not going to let you just black pill us the whole time and I know that that's not your intention and yeah. actually your life's work is to to not do that at all but just to give the devil his due and do as much of what you just discussed as we can so would you say it's something like we've had you know 250 plus years of the enlightenment that got us past much of the tribal stuff and now we're we're just at the end of it. Does, does, does this feel inevitable where we're at at the moment, especially if you look at what's happened you know, since October 7th, where we're now seeing a new version of tribalism burst forth? Does it seem like the obvious end of enlightenment liberalism? Unfortunately, Something that guys like you and I tried to defend very hard before it was cool, I guess. Right, and while there was still m more Some opportunities, juice, yeah. it's now later, unfortunately, yeah. in, in, that, uh, in that history. But, I think it was not inevitable, but in order to avoid it, we needed to recognize what we had and not delude ourselves about how complete the job had been. In other words, recognizing that we had effectively discovered the, the broad structure that we needed to live by and had never fully achieved it. Right? Obviously, the founders of the American experiment simultaneously understood that nobody needed to be given advantage over anybody else, or it was essential that they not have advantage over anybody else. At the same time, they preserved slavery. So mm -hmm. it was never perfect. It was, at best, a prototype. But we had to recognize what that prototype implied about what kind of world we could have, and then we needed to defend it with everything we had. We needed to defend it, and we needed to... I don't even want to say complete it because that, that implies that you're going to get there. And right, and really there's get, no there there. You're going of. to approach it, yeah. right? And you're going to get to a place where the gap between the system you have and the system that you're trying, that you're shooting for is so small, it's, it's not worth messing anything up over. What do you think the closest we've ever got to that was? Like, to, I always say on the show now, if we could just reverse it to 1995, we're probably, probably pretty good. Well, yes and no. I think 1995 is not a bad estimate of the closest we got, right? And, and just as a proxy for it, the degree to which one's race, for lack of a better term, mattered was probably at a low ebb at that point. Yeah. It didn't matter at the level of zero. It mattered, right? And certain races mattered more than others. But everybody understood, all of the decent people understood that it was desirable to have a world in which everybody had access to the market, nobody was barred because of where they came from. And we have now lost touch with that, obviously. We've, we've embraced the idea that nothing matters more. And of course that is going to produce uh, a revival of all of the ancient rivalries and a bunch of new ones. And it just doesn't look survivable. And what's more, I think, if you could just simply teleport everybody for a couple of days into the future that they are toying with delivering us all to, they would recognize instantly that the loss that they were, that they were contemplating was just unthinkable. What if you could teleport the other way? So what if we could teleport to 1995, assuming it's a roughly, does, it's not the exact year, but ballparking, that things were better. What would you tell the people of 1995 you're supposed to do? 
in the face of this? Because that's what I keep coming back to. A bunch of us were screaming about this. Clearly that wasn't enough. Yep. So what would you tell the people of 30 years ago? How are you gonna fix this? That is an extremely difficult thought problem. And in fact, I fear that the answer is short of, by the way, I'm from the future. I know you're not gonna believe that, but if you can get over that one thing, if I can establish that one thing for you, then I've got a message about what's about to happen and what you have to do to prevent it and why it matters, right? That you could do. But if there's no way to convey, hey, actually, I've seen where this goes and it's not good. Right, so you then, need Marty telling Doc that he fell off the toilet to figure out the flux <laughs> capacitor, but short of that, we're kind of screwed. I think so, because I know, you know, actually, it's funny, Heather and I have a little, uh, just sort of private thought experiment, you know, because we knew each other in high school, I'm often saying to her, don't you wish that we could uh, just tell our high school selves about the present and <laughs> what would they say, right? And the answer is, it's not plausible. Yeah. The idea that we would get here is, is unimaginable. And I think people, I don't wanna say, would rightly reject the message because it would sound too preposterous, but of course it would. I mean, we're fighting about whether men can become women, whether you know pedophilia is a sexual orientation that you can do nothing about and we should be tolerant of whether two plus two really equals four i mean literally there is nothing There's left that we can agree on nothing so okay so short of being able to prove that you were from the future is there anything in retrospect that we could have done again that's the thing that i still seem to be hung up on is this all inevitable that the system was going to collapse, the algorithms were gonna grapple hold of us, the, the, uh, the rent seekers as you're talking about in the elite, like all of it was inevitably going to get us to this civilizational moment. Well, there are a couple things that go into it which were probably necessary ingredients and so maybe if you could prevent one of them, you'd, you'd be somewhere better. And I, the two that come to mind most directly, um, I think there was a terrible misstep with atheism. And what it did was it unhooked a set of protections, some of which really were not no longer necessary, many of which were still essential, but for reasons that were not literally explained in the documents in question. And I know because for a while I was pretty close to the only evolutionary biologist trying to bridge this gap and speaking to religious people and saying, look, my colleagues are telling you you're sick with a mind virus. I know that's not right. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that what you think took place literally happened. And we have to have that conversation. What if what you believe is important but not literal, right? Getting there from an evolutionary perspective, if we could have done that earlier and not temporarily flirted with the idea that you know, simple atheism was somehow a sophisticated way of navigating through life, mm -hmm. then maybe um, we could have, maybe those people who had long-standing traditions that contained wisdom uh, that might have prevented this would have had more power when it mattered. I really think um, that's so, a So you must be pleased then in that there doesn't seem to be much of an atheist movement left in America? I don't know if pleased is the right word, but it does, you know, I think that the Sam Harris, Jordan Peterson debates sort of put an end to that movement in America. As they should have, but yeah. I'm not thrilled with what I'm seeing replace it. And I think there's a, you know, let's put it this way. If we take your question about what could we have said to the people of 1995 to get them to save us from the world of 2023, um, the, the coming calamity that is going to happen if we just simply embrace the religious doctrines, philosophies, and values of the past and hope that we can now ride out the storm, that's when we could stop now by having a conversation that says, look, it was wrong to dispense with these compendiums of wisdom that we've been handed in all of these traditions. But those compendiums of wisdom were built by natural selection in an environment we no longer live in. And so we are, we are stuck in a terrible problem, which is you can't embrace the solutions of the past to get out of the problems of the present, 
and you can't abandon the solutions of the past because they're outdated because you'll end up abandoning all sorts of stuff that matters in ways you don't know about. So that is, I, I don't want to candy coat it. Yeah. There's no simple solution to that that doesn't involve um, repeatedly injuring ourselves as a civilization as we discover which fraction of those traditions is still relevant, which fraction has become uh, toxic and inappropriate, what it should be replaced with. That's a very long-term puzzle that you can only solve if you're careful about it. There's no, there's no solution you can deliver in the present and say, here's the subset of those traditions that's still relevant. Here's the part that needs to be replaced. Here's what it needs to be replaced with. That's an evolutionary process that's going to do it. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop screaming, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.